Hello, this is Ken from the CC, here today to give you a wonderful demo of Windows 8.1. Now, we have done some demos in the past of Windows 8.1, but Windows 8.1 was in a developer preview phase at the time, but now it is officially released. You can get it in a store as a physical item. You could possibly get a digital download if you can do that. Or if you're using Windows 8, you can upgrade right from the Windows Store for free. So, Windows 8.1 is part of Microsoft's new rapid release cadence, so they'll have more frequent updates out for Windows users and at lower cost. For example, this version of Windows, 8.1, is free. So let's take a look at some of the new features. To start with, we have an updated start screen, and a lot of people have different opinions about the modern user interface, which is this whole tile business going on here. A lot of people like the desktop environment better, and they were kind of upset when Windows 8 started focusing a lot on these tiles. Well, there are some more desktop features thrown in and some start screen changes that might make your life a little bit easier. So let's take a look at some personalization here. If we go to our charms, which in case you're not aware, you can use a touch screen to swipe out the charms menus, but you can also use your cursor and position it and get the charms here. And let's go to settings and let's say personalize. So there's some new funky patterns going on with the start screen background here. If you like that sort of thing, I'm not a huge fan of them, but maybe you will like them. And some of them are animated even. So we got like this dragon here, which has a cool animation effect. And there's another one. So let's take a look at this. Uh, I think it's this gear one here. Now let's see robots. So yeah, if you like robots, you know, you got some animated gears going on back there. You know, just uh, some other eye candy options if you'd like. And one of the new options is you can have your desktop background be in the start screen there. And you can also customize your colors down here as well but I'm going to stick with my grays that I have set there. So if we go to the desktop, you can see this is my background image here, right? And this is one of the default ones that comes with Windows. But if I go to the start screen, it just kind of fades it out and brings in the tile. So you can have your background picture there. Not a problem. Another thing you will notice on the desktop is the start button is back. So if you want, you can just click that and go in between the start screen and the desktop so that is now there and a little addition to the power user menu these options were here previously but now you have a shutdown or sign out menu which is pretty efficient so that's just a right click on the start button there so that's pretty nice that that is back in there instead of it being hidden you can still use the windows key to go back and forth between the experiences as well so let's take a look at some of the tile customizations as you may see there are some different sizes here so if we right click we go into this new customize mode and this is similar to how Windows 8 worked, it's just a little more efficient. One of the examples of a new feature is you can have different sizes. So before it was basically this size or this size. But now, if you want, you can make them really big to display more information. Or you can have them really tiny if they're not that important. So you can do that. I like having the desktop icon nice and large. It works with the calendar too. I don't have a Microsoft account set up with this, but I believe you can actually display like a full calendar, like a month here. So that's pretty nice. And these are still live tiles, so you can still have emails scroll by, kind of like this is what we're doing with the weather here. So we're using this larger tile to display more weather information. And we can use these stock tiles to display stock information. And let's say I want to see that bigger, I can make that larger so I can see more stock information at a glance if the live tile loads, which it doesn't seem to be right now, but we'll just shrink that back down. And it's the same thing with these other apps as well. And I believe this food and drink app is actually a new addition as a built-in app, and we can make these larger and see more information. There you go. So, or they're just nicer to look at, especially for like photos and things like that. So that's really nice. So those are some new size customizations and color changes or color customizations for the start screen. Another addition you will see is the PC settings icon is actually an icon that you can get to on the start screen, which is pretty nice because before you always had to go to change PC settings in the panel here but now you can get to PC settings with a click of the mouse. And one thing you will notice with PC settings is the interface looks pretty nice. It's a little bit different. And oh, while this popped up, let me show you this. This is part of the new helps and tips application. These interactive arrows will actually tell you how to get to the certain gestures. So see how the arrow pointed up there and it showed me how to get to this. That's our app switcher. And we can also switch between our recent apps or desktop just right from this corner here. So that is really nice. We'll take another look at that in a bit. But anyway, back to the PC settings here. There's a search button built right into here instead of having to go to the search charm all the time. So we could search for our settings like we could do a refresh. And we could, oops, let's uh, actually spell that correctly. So we could search other 
panels there. We could do, uh, let's say we want display settings. So we could do display settings and it will let us change our resolution here, give us some more options. And the side panel here is a lot more clean than the last version of Windows. Basically, you can just go back and forth between the menus here instead of them extending outwards or bringing out other tabs on the screen. And there's even a new panel that gives you your most recent settings. So maybe this was a recent setting I used. It knows I click it often, so I can go to that nice and easily. So that's the new uh, PC settings panel. There's still the normal control panel if you need that. That is still built in. That is not a problem. This is just the modern UI version. Let's take a look at some more start screen functionality. As you can see here, there's a nice little arrow here. What does that do, you may wonder? Well, if you click it, it brings you right to the All Apps panel, and there's a search bar right there still. You could sort by date installed, category, whether if, whether or not it's frequently used or not. So that's pretty cool. So that is available to you. That was in Windows 8, but it wasn't as easily accessible. So that's a little bit of a change, and we'll show some more features with that in a bit as well. In terms of new applications, we have a new modern UI calculator a sound recorder, a scanning application, and an alarms application. So these are built in, these are really nice. So I could set alarms here, use it as a timer, use it as a stopwatch. It's all built in, it's really nice for portable devices. And we have, I'll give you another example, we got our calculator here. So we have a full screen modern UI calculator. Pretty nice. And I'll show you, these nice full screen apps aren't only good in full screen, but if you have larger displays or you want to snap, we'll get into more of the snapping features in a bit. Okay, so I'm going to show you some features on the desktop. A lot of Windows 7 people who are a little skeptical about going over to Windows 8 may really like these certain features. Like I said earlier, the start button is there, so that might ease some worries. But if you right click on the taskbar and go to properties, here's some cool features. Navigation. This will let you change some things that make it act more familiar let's just say so for example when you sign in or close all applications on the screen it typically goes to the start screen but you can have it go to the desktop if you want like we showed earlier you can show your desktop background picture on the start screen you can also have the start screen appear on a specific display that you're using I believe that was already there in Windows 8 but I'm just going through these again just to make sure this one is new show the apps view automatically when you go to start so if you click this and we hit apply, and let's say we go to the start screen, it'll automatically take us to the apps menu. So if you're just a guy that wants to get to your apps quickly, that's fine. I like to turn that off, honestly, and keep it how it normally is, because I like getting to my at-a-glance information right here with these tiles, but that option is there for you. So let's take a look at the helps and tips app. Remember that little pop-up that showed up before? Windows 8.1 is a lot more helpful when it displays how to use gestures, you know, swiping or putting your mouse in a corner or something, it's a lot more helpful. And if you ever need to get back to any of those tutorials, they are in here as well. So you can search in here or get to a certain category like, hey, what's new in Windows 8.1? Well, that's kind of what I'm covering with you right now. There's actually quite a few changes and there's a lot for developers, but we're just going over some of the bigger new features. But yes, there's a lot of nice new things in Windows 8.1. All right, so I'm gonna go back to the start screen here and I will demonstrate Snap because there's a lot of new changes with Snap here. So let's open up some apps. I'm gonna open up Weather. We'll open up, we'll open up the Helps and Tips app. We'll keep that open, maybe some maps. And eh, let's open up Photos, and a calculator, and maybe the sound recorder. Let's just get a lot of stuff open here. Okay, so I'm gonna to go to the desktop. And when we go into the corner, like I was showing earlier, this is where we can switch between our apps. So that's really nice, that's still there. But the cool thing with snapping is it's more flexible than in Windows 8. And you can even do 50-50 snapping, which was not supported before. So let's say we're on the desktop and we need to, I don't know, maybe we're doing a screen recording, we want to do an audio recording with our mic simultaneously or something. We can just, yeah, I don't know, snap that there so we can have that like that and uh, make it smaller if we need to. So now we can just do a recording here while we work on our desktop here. And let's say, okay, we're done with that, so we'll drag that down and close the application, and you still get this designated snap area, so if we go back to our menu here, and let's say we want something else in there, like, oh, maybe I need helps and tips, we can drag that into there, and still use the application snapped there. And this is really nice on larger displays, so that's a nice thing to have there, so we'll close that out, maybe get another application, let's see what else we got here, maybe we need, weather information yeah so we can drag that in there and uh we'll just block that for now so yep we got this nice weather app everything works right here 
We can drag this over some more and go full screen. Get some weather information. Maybe go back to the desktop. And now it's gone because we got rid of it because we dragged it into full screen and then we pulled out of it using the start button. But I can drag it back if I want. I can 50-50 snap it. And another way to get rid of it, I can just drag it away. But the app is still running. I just hit it from the desktop, but it's still running up here. If you want to actually close it, you can drag it down to the bottom of the screen and get rid of it. Or you could just right click and hit close. You can also right click and hit insert left or right or replace the desktop. So I can actually just do boom, insert left and it will snap it to the left for me. Another nice change is search. Actually, that's more than just a change. It's actually a pretty badass feature. So let's go to our search charm here. So we can tell the search function to search just files, just settings, maybe some images on the web or whatever. Or we could have it search everywhere. So I could search a file on my computer if I wanted, but I could also get at a glance information from the web. Let's say I want to look up a celebrity. Simon Baker. I could just do that. Boom. The Bing search engine will provide me with a very graphical layout of all of this information about Baker. Images, links to Wikipedia, the Internet Movie Database, TV Guide. And it just arranges it very nicely for you. So let's say we want to search for another thing. I'll do something from the computer clan here. Ghost Murderer. So we can search that, and we have the Wikipedia article someone wrote about it. We have our YouTube videos here that are all gathered together. It's actually going to be a pretty cool series. We started it already, but we're continuing it now. And if you like crime dramas or shows like The Mentalist, you'll like this upcoming short film. We're doing a sequel. But yeah, so it pulls everything together. Bing knows what to search for. And I know Google is most commonly used over Bing, but... I actually find Bing pretty nice for certain things, and it works really nice with the search interface. So, once again, pictures, websites, Wikipedia, the excerpts are even here. You can open up Wikipedia articles in the application if you want, or you could open them up in the browser. And we can even go to a YouTube video. So, let's say we wanted to watch the Ghost Murderer movie, we could click that or go to the bloopers. We click it, and we could open it in Chrome or Internet Explorer or any of our other browsers. So, let's go to a website here just to show some different changes in Internet Explorer. As you can see, part of the interface looks a little bit different. Also, if you go to your menus here, everything is all confined into the bottom bar before it was kind of split across the screen. So you had this part on the bottom and your tabs on the top. It's a little more unified now. It's all just at the bottom, so it's a lot more clean. This is the full screen modern UI version, but you can still bring this to the desktop if you want. So we could just go here and hit view in the desktop and we still have that full support right here yep and we got version 11 right here so a new version of ie with windows 8.1 now i'd like to show you some changes with the keyboard so let's go into a word processing application let's see word we'll just open up wordpad and this is more for touch devices i don't have one but if you do have a windows tablet this will be a nice change in Windows 8.1. So let's say we're typing on the keyboard here. And as you can see, it looks a little bit different because there's some really nice changes here with numbers, for example. So let's say I am typing, you know, QWERTY. Yeah, I'm typing QWERTY. And let's say I need a number. Well, instead of switching in between two different keyboards, kind of like on other touch devices or taking up another row of numbers, you can see the numbers are right over these letters here. So you just swipe up and you get your numbers. And when you swipe up, you also get other options. Let's say you need a different variant of that character. You can get that as well. So I just got my numbers. It's really nice. And that works for other types of punctuation as well. So if I go to the period here, I could swipe up, get a colon, swipe up, get a semicolon, swipe up from here on the question mark, get exclamation points, slashes, hashtags, you know, whatever. So that's a really nice feature for touch because you can just put your finger there and swipe up and get those different characters. So that's another nice little tidbit in Windows 8.1. Another new application included is reading lists. So let's say, for example, we go to Internet Explorer. Let's go to our blog. And let's say there's a bit of news, so hey, okay, Steam Controller, yay. So let's go here, 
and we'll load up that page. And if we go to our charms here, we go to share, I could put this on the reading list and it will just come in on the side here and it says shared from Internet Explorer at 10.16 a.m. I could hit add and now it's in the reading list. And I could do that for multiple articles that I want to get back to later. So let's say I'm on the start screen. I can pull up my reading list and there's my article. And you can just popularize this with whatever you'd like. I could say open and it will snap and bring me into the browser. And like I said, with the new snapping, it will just stay in a nice little compact list here. So if I had more articles, I could just click on them and I could browse them side by side kind of like this. And let's say I want another article that I want to bookmark for later. Let's say I have this one here. I know kind of ironic Mac article on a Windows demo, but it's here. So we can go to the charms here, hit share, and add another item to the reading list while the reading list stays open. So we can just keep going through reading and adding more things to the reading list as it stays open next to Internet Explorer. I think it's pretty convenient. You could also search if you have a very elaborate list of articles. And when you're done, you could just right click on these and hit delete. And maybe you're done reading for now. We can close that. And maybe we're done with Internet Explorer, so we can close that as well. So those are some of the changes and new applications in Windows 8.1. There's quite a bit more, but I can't get through everything. There's a lot of nice new changes in Windows 8.1, and I will say it's very awesome for free upgrade to Windows 8 users. If you're not using Windows 8, you will have to pay for the upgrade, but I don't know. I think it's worth it going from 7 to 8.1, and a lot of those little tidbits that people were worried about with the modern UI interface have been changed. I mean, this is kind of like Windows 8 Take 2. You know, the start button's back. You have that new all apps view that you can default to. So those are some nice new changes. If you have any other questions or comments, leave them below and let us know. Thank you for watching this demo. And also let us know about your experience with Windows 8 or Windows 8.1. All right, thanks for tuning into this demo, and we'll see you later. Don't forget to subscribe to stay in touch with more Real Deal videos and click that like button if you liked the video. And if you want to see more content from us or apply for a YouTube partnership, visit us on our other great websites.